Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, wanted to give you guys an update on where we're at. Currently right now, this is where we are. We're only down about like $300 total, um, which is huge because we were down like 2000 at one point, if you guys remember, uh, like a few weeks ago or, or a month and a half ago or so. So uh, making a lot of progress. The uh, footage that I have here today was from July 24th, July 25th, uh, my weekend in Vegas. I um, was allowed to film at the Bellagio and Aria a bit, so I only got Bellagio footage though, just because the Aria, um, I didn't have a good seat and stuff, so um, really good uh, sessions overall, came out positive from Vegas, which is, you know, always good, and uh, this is a pretty exciting session, there was a lot of action, so I hope you guys enjoy it, but um, yeah, so here it is. So one of my first ever hands at Bellagio, I pick up Pocket Kings and Under the Gun Plus One opens to like $25 or so. It folds over to me and I raise to $55 and Under the Gun Plus One shoves for about $215. Yeah, we have Pocket Kings, I'm not going to be going anywhere here. I'm not totally sure what this guy's range is like, but it's $160 more or so for me to call. I feel like it's a pretty easy decision with Kings and he ends up showing Queen 10 suited. It's a bit of a scary flop, I'm gonna let it go ahead and play out uh, the two of spades on the turn and then the ace of diamonds on the river. We take down a pretty massive pot to start off my first ever session at Bellagio. Uh, the vibes are really good here and I'm feeling like it's gonna be a pretty lucky night. I'm changing up the format a bit on the pot size and then the profit at the end so it's a little bit more clear but let me know what you guys think. About 10 minutes later we pick up queen 10 offsuit on the button with about $715 behind. Under the gun opens to $15 and it folds over to me. I make the call, small blind puts in the call and the big blind folds. So we are now three players headed to the flop and that's going to come out with queen jack 7 rainbow. And uh, pretty quickly here the small blind puts in a check and the under the gun player bets $20. Um, it's on me here. I'm trying to decide at this spot if I want to raise, but um, I don't want to scare anyone off. I feel like we have the best hand definitely. So go ahead and put in the call for $20. Small blind does fold. Um, was really hoping he would continue here. Uh, and the two of hearts comes out on the turn, pretty much a blank. Um, a backdoor flush can get there now on the river, but I think we're pretty safe overall, especially because we have a heart in our uh, hand. Under the gun checks over to me, and now it's my decision if I want to bet here for value. I still think we have the best hand, and I don't know how much more value I can extract when this gets to the river. I'm not totally sure what this guy has, but I'm assuming he might have like middle pair. Um, he might be on a draw for a straight. Not totally sure, but I put in a bet for $50, and he folds pretty quickly. Uh, I might have bet a little bit too high there, um, but I definitely think it's right to bet. A few minutes after that, we pick up Ace-4 suited in the cutoff. Um, under the gun opens to $10, and middle position calls to $10. These are pretty weak sizes here, so I go ahead and raise it up to $30. My hand's not the strongest, but I am in a pretty good position here, and um, I want to try to get maybe one more player to fold and go heads up with this hand, or maybe we can get a good flop of spades and get some value. That's my thought process with the raise. Um, it might be a little bit too loose, but I think it's okay. Middle position puts in the call for $30. And we are now headed to the flop, heads up. Um, it comes out a 6 10 4 with two spades. Pot's at $75 now, so we are in a great spot. We might only have bottom pair right now, but we do have a chance at what is essentially the nut flush in this position. Uh, I'm feeling good when the middle position bets $50. I think it's safe to continue on at this point, considering that we at least have a pair for some decent showdown value, and we also have an ace. Um, for the chance at that nut flush. So I go ahead and put in the call and we're off to the turn, which is a Jack of Diamonds. I'm not completely sure this card is good for me at all. Um, it makes it a little bit harder for me to bluff, I think, if he has something like Jack 10 or something along those lines, um, you know, which is definitely in his range, but he goes ahead and checks and I check back. The two of clubs comes out, um, try to do some paw control, but he overbets and shoves to $550. Um, you know, I'm not really even sure what I'm thinking about at this point. I guess I'm kind of just like, you know, should I try to do like a crazy hero call? Cause his line's not really making much sense. I don't know if he like hit a set and, or a two pair and he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to try to get this guy to think I'm bluffing and go all in. But 
Um, yeah, we lose like 80 bucks. Not sure why I thought so long there. Uh, I guess I was trying to be a hero, but yeah. Well, no need to be a hero when we pick up pocket jacks uh, on the next hand here. We are in the cutoff with about $700 behind. Uh, under the gun limps and I see a raise from the middle position to $15. You know, I'm in the cutoff, I have pocket jacks. I feel like a raise is in order here. So I go ahead and raise it up to $45, hoping to eliminate most of the players and maybe go heads up with jacks. I um, think that'll be our best chance of winning this pot here. So it folds over to middle position and he puts in the call for $45. My plan worked out and we're now heads up, which is what we wanted. The flop comes out ace 10 jack. We hit a set on what I believe is a pretty wet board here though. Um, there's a flush that can get there, there's a straight. I kind of want to charge these draws. So when I see the middle position check, um, I definitely want to put in a bet here to charge a draw. I only bet $30, which I think is actually too low. Um, I want to charge a bit more, but he folds anyways, so I guess it worked out. I think on a board like that, it's probably better if I bet, even though I have a set just to make a flush and straight um, have to pay to, to continue. Shortly after that, uh, we pick up ace queen offsuit on the button. I have about 650. I've been going up and down. Um, nothing crazy has been happening, but it limps over to me and I go ahead and raise it to $20 here. Up to this point tonight, there's been a lot of limping going on and I'm trying my best to punish it and make sure I'm charging people to play in the pots, especially when I'm in position. So um, I have a couple callers here and the flop comes out eight queen three. We make a top pair with a very good kicker. And as in pretty good kicker, I mean, we have the absolute best kicker we could have. So I go ahead and uh, make an aggressive bet here of $50. Um, I think this might be a misplay. Whenever I see like two of the same suit, I tend to try to charge people for draws, especially when both players fold. I'm a little bit disappointed in myself for making that bet, but um, I'm worried about a flush getting there and I wanna make sure they have to pay for that. So I make a pretty large bet and I lose some money, I think. And up to this point, we we're running so good. When I pick up seven deuce, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open raise on this. So I do that to $20. Uh, and I like to role play like I'm on a HCL stream or something. And uh, I'm playing a bounty game because, you know, it's fun in my head. But in reality, no one cares if I win at seven deuce. So I get two callers, <laughs> which is not preferred um, with seven deuce, but we'll see what happens. But, you know, I'd rather be lucky than good. And uh, when I make trips on the flop, I'm pretty happy I played. Uh, everyone checks through and we go ahead and turn a boat. Big blind checks pretty quick. Under the gun bets $10. Um, you know, confident we have the best hand here. I, th I feel like this is appropriate to raise. I'm not sure why I bet. I think I'm just not used to playing seven deuce and I'm not really sure what I should be doing here, but uh, bl big blind check raises to $50. Under the gun folds and I go ahead and put in the call for $50. Um, you know, obviously we have a full house. I'm not gonna go anywhere. Um, if he has a queen, oh well. Uh, Jack of diamonds comes out. He instantly bets $100. Um, kind of weird. I feel like his line's not making a ton of sense. I mean, the check raise is probably what he wants to do, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the call. So I do that and he mucks and I show the seven deuce and like I expected, no one really cared. I was pretty happy that I won with that hand, but I guess, you know, it's whatever. So yeah, we get a pretty nice pot. I think I made a good call there. Um, his line didn't make a bunch of sense to me, but um, yeah, I don't know. He, he bet a little too fast too. It kind of made me think he doesn't have the queen. I feel like he would have taken his time a bit more. So about five minutes after that hand, we pick up king queen offsuit. I'm in the cutoff and I open uh, to $20 here and the button puts in the call for $20. So, um, you know, feeling pretty nervous here because the button player to my left is a really good player and he generally plays pretty tight. So I don't want to be in pots with him, but uh, maybe we can exploit that. Middle position puts in the call as well and we are into the flop here, queen 10, nine with two clubs. Uh, pretty good flop for us actually. It is a, a wet board again, but it's pretty wet for us. So I'm not too worried. Middle position bets $35 to start us off. Now this is also pretty weird again because I was the preflop aggressor and he's just betting into two of us so um, he's definitely repping a strong hand. I call the $35 and the button folds who was my uh, primary concern in the hand to begin with so I'm glad he's out of here. Um, feeling a lot better now that he folded uh, and we come off to the turn and it is a jack of hearts. So we have a straight at this point. Um, the only straight that really beats us is uh, ace king. So. 
and I'm not really putting any of my opponents on that right now based off the preflop action. So when middle position checks over to me, I'm trying to think how I can get the most value out of this hand. And uh, there are two flush draws out there, so I definitely want to charge for those. I feel like he could be on a big flush draw. I feel like it's appropriate to bet pretty decent size here. I go ahead and put in $75. The sizing um, could have been a little bit higher, I think, just based off the fact that there's two flush draws out there. I feel like there's a high likelihood that he could be on a big draw here, um, maybe even a straight draw or something. So uh, I think I could have charged a bit more, but um, you know, I feel like I didn't want to scare him off too hard. So he puts in the call for 75, two of clubs gets there and he instantly checks over. My thought process here is I don't think much worse calls me. So I go ahead and just put in the check. Um, you know, a straight and a flush could have gotten there, so I don't think this guy is going to call much with like a pair or even two pair. Um, you know, I already have a straight, I might as well just um, be happy with what I have and not risk getting baited into a uh, check raise or anything like that. And not too long after that, we pick up ace queen suited on the button. Um, you know, dream position here, it kind of limps over to me and I open to $20. You would think we'd be up a lot more at this point, but I didn't include all the hands where I'm losing like $10, $20 here and there. That Those add up definitely, so um, we're not up too much on the night yet, but the small blind does raise to $60 here. Um, this is the player I'm worried about. He's been making a lot of good decisions all night, and he's a pretty tight player, so generally not trying to be in pots with him. Um, the hijack does make the call for $60, and I have a decision to make here. My thought process is I could definitely um, bet a little bit more here. I could go for the raise, but uh, I'm not sure if that's a little bit too loose with ace queen. And especially since I'm in position, I'm more than happy to see a flop with two other players. So um, I go ahead and just put in the call and I drop my chips because I'm pretty nervous, I guess. So um, we're going to go to the flop now. And the flop is going to come out 10 king jack rainbow. I flop a straight with a backdoor flush draw. Um, and not only a straight, the nut straight. So we're pretty much in the dream spot here. Um, you know, checks around. I'm going to let people catch up on this board. It's pretty wet. I don't want to scare anyone off. And the six of diamond comes out on the turn, which I think is a decent card for us because um, if someone did make a pair or two pair or something on the flop, um, they're not going to be too scared of this card. They might want to bet, which sure enough does happen. The small blind does bet $100. Honestly, in my head right now, with how tight this guy is, I'm thinking he might be having like, um, you know, pocket aces, pocket queens, something like that. Um, you know, maybe even a set. Uh, he could have had kings or jacks or something, maybe even tens. Hijack folds. Um, it's on me now to make a call. I'm deciding here if I want to raise. I think the most value I can get is let this guy keep betting. So I go ahead and make the call. I want to make it seem like I'm making a hard decision though, so um, you know he doesn't think I'm just putting in the call and stringing him along really fast. Seven of spades comes out, we effectively have the best hand here. I'm not worried at all, he instantly shoves, I'm not going to slow roll him. He doesn't even show me what he has, so I think he was just trying to bluff me all along. And uh, yeah, we take down a massive pot, um, $520. The guy was bluffing into me, so um, yeah, pretty unfortunate for him, but I got lucky on that one. Next, we pick up ace queen offsuit in the hijack position. I have about 1375 behind. Uh, middle position opens. I call the button calls. And now we are uh, three players headed to the flop. Just kidding. Small blind also called. So we're actually four players headed to the flop. And that flop is going to come out ace jack eight with two diamonds. Uh, pretty good flop for us. Again, we have top pair with a really good kicker and a backdoor flush draw. It checks around, pots at $85. Um, and the dealer forgot that it checked around, so he's just verifying with us again, but we're like, yeah, it checked around. Six of hearts come out on the turn. I uh, still believe we have the best hand at this point. I'm not too scared of much else. Small blind bets out $30, and the middle position folds shortly after that. I still have another player acting after I do, so um, I go ahead and just put in a call, but I do think a raise might be appropriate here, just to try to take down the pot now, um, if he's on a flush draw or something like that. But button goes and folds, and now we are off to the river, which is a king of diamonds. You know, I don't think this is a good card for me. I do block the diamond flush with the queen of diamonds, but, you know, straights get there, um, flushes do get there. But when he checks, I try to bet for value here. I don't know what worse will really call me. That's why I kind of make the bet really small. I'm thinking maybe a jack would call me or a worse ace might call me. Um, so that's kind of my thought process there. When he puts in the call, pretty sure we have the best hand here, and uh, we do. He doesn't even show me. Uh, we take down a nice pot. I think I could have maybe gotten a little bit more value out of that hand. 
but I didn't want to bet too much um, considering the hands I was targeting I think would have been a little bit scared if I bet uh, a bit more. Not too long after that we pick up 10-9 offsuit in the big blind. The cutoff opens to $15 and the button and I put in the call for $15. We are now three players headed to the flop and the pot's at about $45 at this point. 10-4-7 uh, comes out. I go ahead and check the cutoff checks. We have top pair and a pretty okay kicker, I guess. The button bets $20 and uh, I'm, I'm comfortable continuing here with top pair. So I go ahead and put in the call for $20. The four of clubs comes off on the turn. So we now make two pair and I still believe we have the best hand. I go ahead and just check though to do some pot control in case anything happens, but um, it checks over to the button and he shoves for his remaining stack of about like $55 I think. I didn't take the best notes here so trying to do with what I can but um, it looks like about $55 he shoves and uh, I'm thinking here you know someone has to act after me. He doesn't seem too strong based off his line so I'm okay with making that call. Cutoff folds instantly so pretty happy with my decision. Seven of clubs comes out here. So I'm not really sure what happened here. Um, I didn't write down what he had and I can't really see. It looked like a five and something else, like five X. And uh, we win with two pair, tens and sevens. So that was pretty good. Um, good hand for us. We take down a pretty nice pot for a small profit there. So some time goes by and I pick up ace queen offsuit uh, in the hijack. I go ahead and open to $25 after it limps over to me and the cutoff calls a $25. And the small blind jams for $200. Um, he's been kind of tilted all night, so I'm feeling a little bit like his range might be a bit wider than generally like how he plays. So I'm de really debating this call here. Um, and I go ahead and actually just put in the call, even though the cutoff has action after me. But um, I go ahead and show my ace queen, and he shows ace jack. The flop comes out four, seven, six uh, with two spades, then the nine, and the six of diamonds comes out and uh, he missed, so we won a pretty silly hand. I think I played a little loose there, but it paid off. This is one of my last hands of the session, so um, that's pretty much wraps up the Bellagio session. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that video. Um, hope you guys liked it. There was a ton of action that night. I ended up leaving up $1,000. We bought in for 500 and I cashed out 1500 so um, you know, super good session. I played a couple more hands after that last hand and lost like 50 bucks or 100 bucks or something like that. So, um, you know, after everything was done though, I left up a thousand bucks. So, super happy. Um, you know, we're back on the right path here to becoming a winning player, I guess. Almost positive, which will be cool. So, um, I did play in Aria and Bellagio uh, the day after that. I had a small win, I had a small loss, but overall we're um, almost back to positive. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, I will see you guys in the next one.